Some 15 years ago, a rock rescue tech by the name of Robert Riversong wrote an article on mirrored systems for the use in technical rope rescue. This applies to technical rope rescue dynamic systems, systems in which the rope moves, either for lowering a load patient rescuer or raising a load patient rescuer. At the time, the article was considered somewhat controversial. It was questioned, for example, whether or not um, hardware existed that could manage dynamic loads in that way. Um, you must remember, um, at the time, it was also when tandem prusset belays were probably you know, still at their height of popularity and hadn't been phased out yet by fire departments. And it would be at least another five years until items such as the uh, Petzl ID would be adopted by fire departments. Today, however, we have items such as the Petzl Maestro and CMC's and um, Rock Exotica's um, MPD or multi-purpose device. And these pieces of equipment, this hardware, fits perfectly into the, the, the systems, the dynamic systems um, suggested by Robert, Robert Riversong all those years ago. We'll have another video coming out um, either before or after the, this one on the changes that now exist to the Petzl ID and how the ID can no longer be used for the purpose of belay but is simply a descent control device. The MPD, however, um, we'll, we will be using it very fine emergency services exclusively for the purpose of mirrored systems um, in dynamic systems, both for lowering and raising a load. Now, what we're looking at are mirrored systems. Uh, this is an industry-wide move heading towards mirrored systems. Mirrored systems can also be known as two tension rope systems, as both ropes are under tension, or dual capability two tension rope systems. Uh, these systems offer many advantages. Uh, one being uh, very much increasing the safety. We don't have the chance of a belay locking up. Because both lines are under tension, if any one line does let go, there is much less fall potential. Uh, Tom Pendley has done a bunch of testing, and with a traditional belay, main line under tension, belay line not under tension, a lot of t testing results show that with a rescue size load, we have up to 12 feet of fall before the system stopped right, with a mainline failure. With a two tension rope system or mirrored system, we're down to about half that or six feet before it stops. Uh, disadvantage would be that it can be difficult to get the same tension on both ropes. But we'll look at some techniques and a general overview and we'll get into more detail with hands-on training and scenarios at a later time. One of the main considerations, as I mentioned earlier, it can be difficult to achieve the same tension on both lines. One thing we can do is rig our systems, our MPDs side by side. That allows our rescuers to be closer, to have a closer visual and also communicate directly. Um, to try and maintain as equal tension as possible. It's impossible to get perfect tension, but having them rig side by side will help. Now, how do we do that? Um, another, what we're gonna look at is an alternative rigging to our low chair V. So in our traditional V, we have uh, the leg coming from an anchor to the anchor plate with a single figure eight knot, and then it travels back to the other anchor. In this case, what we've done is created two. And the reason for that, whenever we anchor, one of the safety goals that we try to achieve is a critical point evaluation. So we're looking to see, is there any one point that if it failed, would we lose our system? So with the traditional V where there's only one figure eight at this spot, if that figure eight were to fail, then we would lose our system. If we are running a main and a belay off both systems. That's why traditionally with, with our low chair Vs, we run a V with a main line off of it and a second V with our belay off of it. We don't run off the same system. But in this case, we're running both the main and belay to the same rescue load, to the same rescuer, 
off of this same system. And all it, this does is adding this second knot allows us to eliminate a critical point at this location. Um, it also will give us less setup time. It will make things quicker for getting that initial package over the edge. And it's advantageous if we have less anchors. And certainly, uh, if we do use the system, we need to be very confident in our anchors. If there's any questioning, there is no doubt that adding the second V would be an advantage to spreading our, our load out over and creating less of a failure point. We're looking at the critical point evaluation at the anchor system. If this line were to fail, this line is going to a rescuer, both lines are going to the rescuer. If this line were to fail, he would be caught by this line. If the MPD or the carabiner were to fail, same thing, he would be caught by this line. And vice versa, if anything in this side were to fail, he would be caught by this side. Once we get to the anchor plate, if the anchor plate were to fail, it's backed up with the spectra cord. Transitioning past the anchor plate, once we get to this leg, of our load chair V, if the carabiner, the rope, or the anchor that it's connected to were to fail, uh, anything on this side, the other leg, the other side would catch the load. And vice versa, if anything on this side were to fail, this leg would catch the load. Now let's take a look at our critical point evaluation at our rescuer. Both lines are tensioned, so both in a way are acting as main lines and belay lines both lines, we have both lines traveling into the ventral. What that does is prevents him being from, pulled from two spots at the same time. So this is where it will get loaded. However, if we were to leave it just connected to the ventral, his ventral connection on his harness becomes a critical point. So by adding a short tether with a prussic to the line, it allows the, the weight to be still held by the ventral, but if the ventral were to fail, his sternal will catch the load. So all we've added, all we've added is a short tether with a prussix. What we're looking at is increasing the safety of this system. If one line were to fail, we're minimizing the travel distance before the other line catches and stops the load. So as we know, both lines are under equal tension or as equal as we can get. Both operators are operating. One important fact is, as we know with the MPD, we're holding the throttle or the actuating device fully open and controlling the speed with our brake hand. One thing I can't emphasize enough is having full control and attention. If one side were to go and let go, the other side would not have sufficient friction to stop it immediately. We'd have to release the handle and or grab with our hand. So as we are operating this, we are attentive and ready to grab with our control hand and let go of the handle. The other thing that we can add to this, if we have the manpower, is a third person. And this person back here is a rope tailor. Um, this is an old technique, but it's brought back for this type of system. And all they're doing is hand over hand, letting the rope go through. The advantage to this is, again, if one side were to let go, they can help add that extra friction and catch the load to really minimize the fall distance before the line catches and stops the load. Ready on down, down slow. Another advantage with having the two MPDs side by side is that one single person can tail the lines, tail both lines. And all we're doing is we're helping to remove that human factor. If something were to let go, we have someone else ready to hold. And again, it's a hand over hand. We're not letting the rope slide through our hands. 